All right, welcome back to the Beers and Break Evens Late Show for Round 19, where I win rock offs and we answer a heap of questions. Timmy Williams heading for an unprecedented thir- 14? 13. I think 13. We'll go, we'll double check it. Actually, if I win today, I'll go back and double check. If I lose, it's irrelevant. Yeah, I, I think we're heading, I, I want to say 14, but mm. still, like, it's not less impressive than 13. It's. <laughs> Fucking unbelievable. Uh, Kat, welcome back to The Late Show. How are you feeling about my rock-off abilities today? A bit of Luke Cavell spirit fingers for those at home again. I'm comforted by the fact that you're excited for it today because I feel like in previous weeks you've dreaded this moment a little bit and I think it's really important for you to come in with confidence. I think I've got a bit of trail mid about me, yeah, like I've yeah. a bit of gravity. When, when DC rolls in for that coin toss, do you think that he's – Feeling he's bad up and about bouncing. Himself. Yeah, he's feeling nah, good. Yeah. No, no, no. I he like knows that. what he brings to the table. Have mm. you two spoken about it leading in? No. No. Have you done any research? No. No. I don't believe in rock-off research. She does. I think it's crazy. You know what they say about elite athletes at the highest level? You, the physicality doesn't matter. It's all about the yeah. mind. That's where we're at. I don't mind that. I think she called me an elite athlete, but I'm not <laughs> sure. Um, shall we? Let's do it. <sighs> oh. I'm nervous. I'm nervous too. I just need to keep it alive. 20, 10 in a, sorry, 20 in a row is over a million to one. It's, it's almost to the point now where there's no pressure on me. It's starting to build I'm, on I'm, you. I'm it's, now nervous. It's, like a, this time. it's a hell of a lot easier to be the underdog in this scenario. Yeah. yeah like, like I'm what, – What's fourteen? What's 13 to 14 for you? Whereas I'm like, oh, I want to get to 20. you got Guinness World Records on the other yeah, end of the yeah. line. Ready to, yeah, I like it. Okay. Yeah. No pressure, no pressure, no pressure. It's no a pressure. lot harder. So will – Tim, defend his title as the Rock Off champion. For the 14th or time. will Guru, the underdog, make his mark? Ah, uh, scissor, paper, paper rock. rock. Yes! Oh, Are you no for real, way. Ru? What is wrong with you? <laughs> this is not a setup by any means. Shit. 14 in a row. Yeah, that's really rattling. Like probably no more rattling than the other 12, but that's, yeah. Fuck, I thought I'd win today. You know what else? Okay. I already know what I'm throwing next week to beat you. I have no I doubt you do. Because I'm in your head. I already know what I'm throwing to lose to you. <laughs> do you know what I respect though? You did something different this week. Did I? Yeah, you did. I have no recollection of what I did last week. I feel like you way. black out in these moments. <laughs> I think I do. I think the pressure just gets to me and I, yeah. Christ, that's bad. Okay, oh um, I guess I'll answer the first one. You can have the first one. Fuck. All right, Kat. All right. Well, we mentioned him before and Nashi8 would like to know, is DCA a run, uh, excuse me, a run home halfback historically averages big numbers after origin? So both of us went DCE at the end of last year for a big, big finish. Uh, I like his draw on the run home again. Uh, you look at the last five or six weeks, Canberra, Warriors, Tigers, Bulldogs, Sharkies, every chance he plays the Sharkies, who could be resting players in the last week. I don't think Manly will be able to afford to rest him. He's got a buy in 22, which isn't ideal. We're all buying Ola Kawatu this week. Mm. I don't mind having that little pair up. We've also got Ruben Garrick, so... I, I don't think I'll do it myself, Timbo, but I can understand people doing it 100%. Yeah, the, the little round 22 buy is a little bit tricky and a Roosters game before it. Um, but, look, he's got the Titans at Four Pines next week, which is enticing. We You know, it's DC. He'll back up from Origin to imagine. He's a maniac. For that run home, though, look, as someone who clearly will be one option, Hines obviously gone now, Sammy Walker owners, Drone Hughes owners definitely hold on to him. Sammy Walker owners give or take. Little pod play. I don't mind it. Oh, just can I hold out to that round 23? We'll see. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to afford halfback trades. If Garrick were to go down injured and DC kicked goals, that would be huge. Game changer. Yeah. Yeah. Love what it. do we got next? Okay, next question. This one is from Will Dive underscore. Is Will Price a buy? Really interesting one, Will Price. He could, like, he has the potential to be by the season because he's got so much attacking <laughs> upside and flair. What puts me off him is job security. Tyson Gamble will do back the next couple of weeks. Uh, draw. After this week, Brisbane into a bye, into the Panthers. So they're three very tough weeks that you'd be pretty reluctant to play him. I so said, I don't love job security. He's a decent price at 345k. I don't mind the buy. I just don't – I feel uneasy about it, Rue. 
the price is not right for me. Mm. Uh, not for me. I just said Tyson Gamble coming back. We know that Adam O'Brien's not afraid to make changes to halves and they're mm. not going well or when they are going well. So I just, yeah, I, I don't think you can do it. He's also not basement price, mate. Like he started at 340K or whatever. So, yeah, not for me. Buy in round 21. Tyson Gamble returning soon. J- j- like Tyson Gamble just re-signed. Surely he's... The guy still right, and I mean, Will Price has done well. Supercoach scored sixty nine on the weekend. Like, I was questioning whether he was trying to lose that game for them the other day. <laughs> Honestly, like, like the amount of drive by, but like the amount of poor plays he came yeah. up with in that second half was like, I mean, it, he came up with the amount of poor plays you'd expect an NRL rookie to make. But Newcastle can't afford to do that. Like, with all due respect to the Raiders, I think that if that was any of the top eight mm. sides, they would have punished them for yeah. that, and they lose that game of football. Yeah. I think this time next year, with more NRL experience under his belt, he could be a serious option. I don't mind him. I just take the job skill. I don't want to have him sitting there on my bench not playing yeah. at that weird price tag. Yeah. Mm, price tag. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is a very topical one from Joseph Karoisi. I have one boost left. Which round should I use it in brackets? I have 13 trades left. Yeah, uh, very topical one here. I and I, I think Timmy will reflect the same. I think next week or the week after is the week to use it. Um, I also think there is a little bit of value in having a boost for the back end. I think I used one at the back end of last year and had a very big round. But I just think with all the injuries and everything, I don't know how many people not named Cat are going to be able to do that realistically. Uh, I think next week or the week out, you're either using it to trade out a Kai Pierce Paul as an extra guy next week or the week after, I think. What do you reckon? Yes, I think boosts have been in for maybe two seasons now. I think this is our second season. Second season. Yeah. And from the – I'm still unsure about the best way to, to use them and how to go about it. But the one that I've been certain of since they were announced is that I think round 2021 20, after the, the third major origin buy round, it's just a great opportunity to use it because it gives you an opportunity just to set your team up for that run home and – it can be tough to do that in the space of two trades and you might need to free up a bit of extra cash or you might have tons of cash in the bank and you can lock in someone that you want for that final seven, eight weeks. You can just get them in your team. So I think each and every year, I think round 20, round 21, uh, is just a great opportunity to do that. You even look at next week, three teams on the buy, origin restings, who knows? Teams might find themselves a bit short. If you got that boost, perfect. Bonus question. If you're someone with 10 players this week, would you consider using it this week? Probably not. Uh, I think as long as your squad's half all right, I'd nearly just cop a hit and and save it. Especially this week, you get three free trades to use. Yep. Well, you like without a boost. A boost would mean four. So, no, nah, you don't need to make four trades this week. Sweet. Cool. This one is, it, once again, off the back of that from Rowan Leonard. How many trades are you aiming to have left with five rounds to go? Shout out to Rowan. Uh, been a big super coach player for a number of years. Uh Oh, I'm hoping to f- come into round five with maybe five or six, ideally. Will that happen? No, I'm sure I'll be punched in the face on many occasions mm. between now and then. But that's how many I'd like to have. And I would like to think that in those last two I, – I, I think it, the question more so for me, Tim, is how many cra- trades do you have for the last two weeks, mm. which there I want to have three or four to be able to make some moves because I think that's what I did last year, uh, which obviously worked out for me last year and I plan to do a similar thing again. So I, I, I'm going to be willing to take a couple of hits here and there in mm. round 20 to 23 to be able to make moves mm. at the back end. Yeah, uh, about f- I think five's the figure for me. It's it's all very approximate and, you know, injuries, all sorts of things are going to dictate how we're sitting. You know, if we get a lot of injuries between now and then, well, we're not going to be in that position. If we get a rosy run, which seems impossible this year, and there aren't injuries and things go well, it's going to make it a lot easier. But I think... Um, a ballpark of about five for the last five rounds. That option to use one a week, hopefully you can save them. And as you said, Guru, maybe use two trades come like round 26 or round, 20, round 26 in particular, I think. Uh, yeah, I think five, four's fine. If you can get to six by then, you're doing better than most. Yeah. Cool. This one is from Jez. He said, Terrell may a trade misses two of the next five and has peaked in price. He's always just been a big watch, hasn't he, Terrell? And he was always going to get us through this origin period well. Uh, he's got a three-round average of 86 points, five-round average of 80. I saw him as a potential sell at top price at around that 700K mark post-origin period, but Joe Maria Hargreaves now suspended for four games. Big factor for him. That changes things a fair bit, and, and it could lead to more minutes. 
I think round 20 against Melbourne with Crichton, uh, Collins, Watson, all these blokes back up from origin. I think he's going to get big minutes again. There's a buy in round 23. So I think watch round 20 and then reassess after that. But my gut feel is you just hold on to him for the season. I don't mind a little pod play to Payne Haas, but yeah. yeah. That's what I'm looking at. And I think the big key that Jared Rhea Hargraves, that suspension, that four weaker, because as you said, that buy round, that buy in round 23. It actually turns into a five-week suspension mm. where we can get Terrell May, I think, getting good scores until round 24. At the end of that, three rounds to go, I'm eyeing off Terrell May to Payne Haas. Yeah. For a bang at the uh, end. So I currently have three, like, rock-solid front rowers in Samuel Afainu, Josh Curran, and Terrell May, and I don't really want to burn a trade on a front rower. Realistically, I'm thinking there's every chance one of them three goes down for a period or whatever, in which case I'd move one of them to Payne Haas. But at the moment, I don't really want to use a trade to get to him. Payne Haas has a buy in round 24, so he will be well rested. He then goes Suncorp Stadium, Para, Dolphins, Melbourne to finish the season. I think Brisbane are going to be fighting for a top eight spot. I can't see them being in a spot to rest guys. I reckon Melbourne's yeah. every chance to rest guys in the last round. I think Payne Haas round 25 is one you should pencil in as a close to must have. Yeah, honestly, I think even potentially sooner than that. And that's it because Brisbane are fighting for spots. They can't afford to play in fewer minutes or rest him from games. They need every minute of every game at the moment, so he's in for a big finish. Jeez, that round 24 buy is perfect for paying ass. Well rested. Yeah, yeah. Huge. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, this is the last question, and it's a good one. This was this is from Arta Rowan, the Scarfy. Which 90s player do you think would have been a beast in Supercoach? Me or you? I don't – I think it's me, okay. actually. You? I think it's me. You go. Um – from the 90s, mm. um, I would be looking at, and I hope I don't steal it off you, I think Bradley Clyde. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got through a heap of work, biggest motor in rugby league, would come up with attacking stats. Uh, I think Bradley Clyde would be an unreal little pick. Uh, but I think as well, mate, his teammate, Mal Meninga, mm. centre, goal kicker, big as a house, faster than one. Not that houses are overly quick, but Mal notably faster than a house. They'd probably be the two that come to mind for me. Who are you looking at? It's so funny. Like, we don't have prep for these questions. They're, they're on the spot sort of thing. There's not much time to think. And your head just goes straight to that that Raiders team yeah. of the early to mid-90s. And uh, mate, mine did the exact same. And Mal's one that came to mind. He would have busted so many tackles back in the day and a goal kicker as well. So it would have been outstanding. Uh, <clears throat> it's a little bloke on his inside as well, Ricky Stewart. Yeah. I think Ricky would have been a little like Nathan Cleary super coach clone where he would have racked up attacking stats, unbelievable kicking game. So it would have just been things like repeat sets, try assist off kicks, all these sorts of things. I, like I don't have the raw numbers in front of me in terms of try assist and tries throughout his career, but I'd imagine there would have just been mountains. I reckon he'd have been unreal. I reckon like a guy like Al, Alan Langer would have been mm. Sam Walker all over again. Mm. It would have either been 140 or 30. Yeah. And nothing in between. Oh. Would have been great. Steve Renolf, Marky Coyne would have been a good one. Would have been some absolute crackers yeah. around back then. Steve Menzies. We might ne- we we almost need a a postseason show on it and just going through it and we can get put some stats together, get some numbers, yeah. it'd be great. Because I that. was gonna say we saw the the post that you did last week mm. showing the scores of I players. Them. Yeah. They're great. Hey? So we They're review, so we reviewed that. But I was gonna say if we're talking players of the nineties, are we rewarding points for what we'd reward reward points for mm. right now? Or are we looking at it as more of what the game was like mm. back then I, and, I and adjusting the point scoring to that? Because that would Like I think on points right now, Mal Meninga in that team that was dominant and he was goal kicking. Mm. Fucking yeah. see you later. Yeah. Shout out to – that was a, a rando uh, brainchild, that one. A great call from him. Good fellow cool, rando. Uh, we're, we're, we're rolling him out over the next 10 weeks, so all the way through to the current day. I like <laughs> that. Very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, some some very, very talented players in that mix. Jim Dimmick would have been a little pod play for Jimmy me. <laughs> Bet your dick on that. Would have loved it. Ooh. Greg Alexander would have been a good one too. Goal mm. kicker of that Panthers side. Mm. Very good. Um, are we done? Yes, we are done. Beautiful. Sure. Um, 
Very good at your accents, aren't you? Yes. I'm you got quite plenty good. of them. I'm quite good at accents. What's on for the weekend, mate? Uh, I I am eyeing off a tea time Saturday afternoon, no three o'clock game, frees a little bit of yeah. space up. Uh, I'm not sure when Josh plays, but I didn't get to watch him last week, so I'll be hopefully getting out to watch him play. Outside of that, not a stack. Uh, only five games of footy this weekend, so a bit of a feed up weekend for mm. us. I know you're going back home. Yeah, back to God's country, Snowy Mountains. Uh, back to Cooma. So, mate, I fit, need to fill the void of only five games of footy. So I'll be going to a bit of bit of local Cooma Stallions rugby league on the Saturday. Nice into a bit of Queanbeyan Ruse rugby league on the Sunday. So I'm I'm doing the double country wow. footy fill up. How are the Queanbeyan Gurus going this season? They're going all right. They're not as dominant as last year. Oh, really? A few injuries, a bit of player Ooh. movement. They've uh, lost a few. Lost their star little fullback. Okay. To uh, I think it was I think Cindus Moses. Oh um, no. Yeah, but mate, they're ticking on well. They knocked off. I think they're third at the moment, but they knocked off top of the table on the weekend, which was a big win for them. So they're they're tracking all right. How's Sammy Williams going? Playing good footy? Yeah, mate. Got it on a, on a string. On a, on a string. Has, he gets the dinner suit out during the regular season. He doesn't feel the need to get tackled too much. So he just a lot of early pass, a lot of early <coughs> kicking, but get to finals time and he, he starts to get down a little bit dirtier. Absolutely love it. Isn't it cool that your brother's coming to the end of his career? My brother's at the start of his. It's Two wonderful. very different journeys. Yeah, yeah. Great to watch. Uh, where <laughs> are you going on holiday this 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 weekend, <laughs> mate? <laughs> or, or are you p- p- packing the bags? Where where oh. are you and Garrick off to? What's doing? <laughs> oh, that's – don't don't start that. Um, no, no holidays. No holidays. Just going to be chilling out watching the footy. We've obviously got – Argentina's playing right now mm. as we speak. Messi so there's lots of what? football action going on, not over the weekend, but on Monday morning. So I'll be just gearing up for that and then uh, hoping to see a nice little win from the Bunnies to get the weekend off to a, a great start. You also went to uh, Ned Brockman's premiere last I did, night. Double I did. D Ned. How was it? It was great. He is He's 25 and he has lived an incredible life so mm. far. I think what he's done as an example to people of what you can do and the fact that he's done it for other people his motivation is never about him it is always for homelessness and to raise money and to help other people's lives and it's really inspirational and I believe that it will be coming out on KO but it will be free viewing so anyone can watch it as long as you've got KO um you need to watch it. It's brilliant. It's a great way of looking at his whole journey across Australia and then I guess whatever's next for Ned as well. But yeah. Hello Sport Boys were there. Jarch was there. For those who don't know, I worked with Jarch back in the day and so when I <laughs> saw him we were we, we reminisced and had a good catch up. It was really nice. But um a couple of giants of social media getting together again, yeah. old pals. That's what happens. Love that. How good. <laughs> um, fantastic. Uh, make sure guys you go check out the SC Playbook podcast from last night. Big talking points, big dog. What'd you go into? Fullbacks. Oh yeah, boy. Fullbacks for the run home. What our plans are. Tedesco, obviously, the go-to if you don't own him already. Fuck that guy. You've got rocks in your head. Uh, <laughs> Plenty who, of rocks. Who to partner with him, though, because there's heaps of options, and I think it's going to blow – the run home is going to be blown wide, <coughs> be blown wide open by fullback selections. Yeah, good shout. All right, uh, we will see you next week on an early episode of Beers and Break Evens because of Origin, then the late show will probably be on Thursday – so we usually do? I yeah. think so, isn't it? Yeah, I think it makes sense. Well, Wednesday, beers and break Wednesday about 12, late show, post-origin, probably 12 on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. something along those lines. Yeah. All right, hooroo. See you next week. Bye.